can't believe we just blew up Godot's yacht. That's going to destabilize crime throughout this whole sector. Yeah, well, you'll understand if I hold back the tears. You don't understand. Crime in the YouTube system, it's like the economy. Plus the power vacuum. Even if Voga gets up and running again, the system is going to be feeling the effects for years to come. Yeah, well, at least we didn't find that Jedi Master with the weird name. Zez, Kai, whatever it is. Zez Kyle? Um, well, that's not true. I already found him. Actually, he found me first. He hired me to watch out for you, keep Goto off your back, until he could meet with you. We'll need to head back to Nar Shaddaa, to that safe house off the docks. I said I'd meet up with him there if we ran into any trouble. What do you want now? If you thought to escape my notice so easily, you would be wrong. As a token of my goodwill, I present to you a gift, this droid. It will serve you well on your journey. How did you get on my ship? I am afraid I do not understand what you mean. Why would I need... why would I want this droid? As I indicated, this unit will remain with you and guard you. It will also serve as an effective voice for my orders during your journey. How do I know it won't try to kill me? I cannot harm you. You are the key to saving the Republic. Pray that you do not prove yourself otherwise. Alright. Goto has joined your party. He has special powers over droids that cannot set off mines. Thanks for the joy, Goto. Now let's get back to Norsada. Where we will pretty much meet up with uh, Zezkael. So, you have returned from exile. Kavar thought you might, if only to wander your old battlegrounds. But I did not think you would come to Nar Shaddaa. Still, you were always a difficult one to read, both when you were tied to the Force and even more when it was lost to you. Why did Kavar think I would return from exile? I do not know. It was a sense he had, and he had served in war as you had. Perhaps he thought he understood you, or maybe he simply hoped he did. He felt you were the key to understanding the threat we face. The others were not so certain, but so many of them are gone now, as you no doubt know. Uh, he sensed some connection between you and many of the worlds touched by war. He thought by traveling to such places, he could achieve understanding. I have questions I want answered. No doubt. I think the answers will provide us both with some measure of peace. I have kept secrets for far too long. Where are all the Jedi? They have scattered, but there is purpose in their movements. It is both to hunt and draw out our enemies. Somehow, they, we, are being targeted through the Force, and when Jedi gather, we are vulnerable. So we have chosen places where it is difficult to sense others through the Force, whether on planets dense with life or touched by war. In such places, we may conceal ourselves, gather information without presenting ourselves as targets. It was part of Kavar's plan. Plan? Yes, he felt if our enemy cannot detect us, then perhaps they would believe themselves victorious and show themselves. And we knew that the war would be lost if we continued to act as we had. I do not know where they wander now. There are few of us, though. Too few. And I have not heard from them in some time. I encountered Vrook on Dantooine. Vrook still lives? I had not felt his presence for some time. What I can tell you, I will. I didn't know I need to know why you cast me out of the order. We told you it was because you followed Revan to war, but you ask because you are not certain of that answer, nor were we. The day we cast you out, that is the moment I decided to leave the order, because I do not believe we truly faced the reasons you were exiled, and if we do not examine such truths, then we are already lost. I think it was because we were afraid. It is a difficult thing to live one's life with the Force. To see a vision of what it would be like to be severed from it, it is more frightening than you know. 
I had other questions. Very well. Why are you on Nershida? I had thought perhaps that here upon the Smuggler's Moon, I might find some evidence of the threat we faced. The bounties on Jedi and their disappearance. I did not believe the two were connected, but there was a chance. And the strong currents of life here on Nar Shadda make perceiving a Force user difficult. I could use it to cloak my movements and watch without being discovered. That is not the only reason you came here to hide. No, you are right. That is not the whole truth. It is difficult to detect a Force user on Nar Shadda, and I knew it. This threat we face. It leaves wounds in the Force when it strikes. It leaves nothing. And you were afraid? To live life without the Force. To vanish and die and leave only an echo. It was terrifying. To be connected to all life around you, then to have it stripped. I can only imagine what it must have been like for you. But even that imagining cannot compare with the truth. But there is more than that. A Nar Shadda, one cannot escape what was left from the Jedi Civil War. From the failure of the Masters, from our failure to properly train Jedi, came disaster. And I wondered if perhaps the teachings of the Jedi had been our failing all along. There have been so many failures by teachers who believed in the Code with all their being. Master Arka failed Ulik, as Master Boss failed Exar Kun, as Kay and Zar and the others of the Council failed Revan and Malak. For all the acts we do to preserve the galaxy, from such an arrogance that all we do is right and just, I wonder if there is a counter-effect that is created that strikes back at us. Exar Kun, Ulik Keldroma, Malak, Revan, you, all Jedi, there is something wrong in the Force, a wound, a sound that is growing, like a scream. You can hear it echo in Nar Shadda, sometimes when the moon is on orbit. It is a frightening thing to feel, that perhaps being connected to all life is not enlightenment at all, but simply another doom. And I think that maybe, perhaps, to forsake the Force as you did, to cut loose our bonds, may not be the wrong thing to do. You taught me something important in the Council Chamber long ago, Exile, and it has stayed with me all these years. You were right to do what you did. Everything you did. I had other questions. Very well. Do you know anything of sports bonds and how to end them? Yes, such bonds are a connection that can be formed at moments of crisis or in the slow understanding that grows between master and apprentice. It is most common between two beings who are sensitive to the Force. It allows the transmission of feelings, of influence. It was something you were gifted with, as I recall, before your fall. You form such attachments easier than most, even to those who could feel the Force only faintly. Even Vrook could not ignore it, which is saying something. Is there any way to remove such a bond? I do not know. A bond between two living beings is not something easily broken. It is not a choice. It is like breaking a feeling, like turning away from the Force. To break a bond, your feelings would have to change, or one of you would have to die. But even then, the bond wouldn't go away. It would simply... It would simply be empty. A wound. I had other questions. Very well. Is that what you think? We did no such thing, but it is a technique that has been used as punishment in the past, yes. It is a rare sentence, and to my knowledge it has only been done once, at a moment where a Jedi discipline has failed. What caused your loss, I fear, was different. I am not certain I understand it. We did not understand it fully then, and only recently do I feel we may have become enlightened. The other masters may have more knowledge of this, but I do not, and I do not know if they even live. Does it matter? It seems your power has returned. Perhaps the loss was not a loss at all. Very well. 
At the end of my trial, you and the other masters said something had happened to me. What was it? Ah, so the records of your trial were found. Good. Sometimes I think this galaxy would be a better place if there were less Jedi secrets. But I have no answer for you, as much as I would like to give one. We vowed never to speak of it. And although I would not keep promises to Jedi, I keep promises I make to others. And Kavar was a friend. If we were gathered as one, then the promise might be revoked. Until then, I can say nothing. That is all I wish to know. What happens now? Now. Now I must take up the role I was ready to cast aside. This threat has finally revealed itself. And we Jedi will need to stand together. I did not speak fully of what I have felt. Staying on Nar Shaddaa, it is an exile of sorts. One that I have chosen. I, too, lost a Padawan on Malachor. Not to the battle, but to the alternative. To the teachings that Revan brought from the unknown regions. And I was not the only Jedi Master to watch a student turn on them. So you blamed them? No, no. They were not to blame. But many of the Order did so. It was a difficult time. A time of strong emotion. Perhaps the Council, perhaps the Order itself, had grown arrogant in their teachings. It is easy to cast blame, but it is perhaps time the Order accepted responsibility for their teachings and their arrogance and come to recognize that perhaps we are flawed. Not once did I hear one of the Council claim responsibility for Revan, for Exar Kun, for Ulik, for Malak, or for you. Yet, you were the only one who came back from the wars to face our judgment. And rather than attempting to understand why you did what you did, we punished you instead. Our one chance to see where we had gone wrong, and we cast it aside. And now, that decision has come back to us and may carry with it our destruction. Perhaps there is something wrong in us, in our teachings, and though I tried, I could not cause that thought to leave me, so I left the Council. And I was not the only one. That is why many scattered, and why many in the Republic do not trust us, and why we do not trust ourselves. Make no mistake, I am no Jedi. This is the end, you see. After this, there will be nothing, and I think it will be for the best. Do you wish to do battle now? I have nothing more to say. But Revan redeemed himself. Certainly that must give you some hope. It provides no comfort at all, for reasons in which I still must keep secret. Suffice to say, redemption was not Revan's choice, and I have never believed those of the Council who attempt to console themselves otherwise for the crime they committed. Is there anything you can teach me? But we have spoken enough, I think. In words, I think, dull us both. Let us speak through the Force, through sparring. This is among one of the greatest techniques of the Jedi Master. Yet when one has seen all that you have, it is such a simple thing, you may wonder why you did not notice it before. Slowly, this technique allows you to maintain your force powers for longer than normal, though the energy and discipline required is great. Perhaps exile has been good to you indeed. It has certainly not dulled your instincts, nor the speed at which you learn. I shall go to Dantooine, to the ruins of the Enclave. If you gather the others, I will meet you there. And thank you, Exile. You're returning. It is good that you are back among us. Alright. So that's pretty much that. Uh, did we... No, I guess we didn't grab that one. Um, so pretty much now, I'm gonna swing on over to Voga to try and convince him to let him have some... Unnecessary observation. Targets acquired. Annoying recitation. 
Let us proceed to facilitate communications, recitation, and bring about the termination of hostilities. Oh my god, these guys again. <laughs> Very well. Failing master. Failing master. Alright. Let's go talk to Voga. And see what's up. Go talk to him. Kavadumpe Masuraku, Popayi, Botenya, Tachimorota Gamsa. Please wake up for me. Herinocha, Mina Radocha, Kawanadumpa, Kankarebe. She carries that cookie. Ulga Kili bot male and wish. I do not have Godo here, but rest assured he will trouble you no longer. That. Voga the Hutt has asked you to speak to Lieutenant Gren on, be on his behalf in regards to establishing a trade agreement sending fuel to Citadel Station. So, so we will definitely make a stop to Telos before we venture over to Dantooine to meet up with the others. Hopefully there won't be any more droids. 